What was it like racing as a five-year-old? My first win, I was pretty mad after the early race in the night, and my dad kind of got on me and said, if you're going to be upset, then do better. And later on that night, we got our first win, and from there, I was kind of hooked. I just hate to lose. The Axum family is all about racing and winning. Emerson's dad, Joe, was a driver growing up, so when Joe married Jenny, who he went to Franklin High School with, and they started a family, racing was destined to be part of the equation. Probably the biggest things I, I do tell him is, you know, be prepared, get your stuff ready. You don't have to get prepared if you are prepared. So describe what it feels like to win a race. My favorite part's afterwards, seeing like the faces on my crew guys or my dad, you know, that are obviously proud. That's my favorite part after a big race. And he's right there, your dad's right there. Yeah, usually he's the first person to hug. What's he usually say to you when he hugs you? He usually says, good job, buddy, or uh, I'm so proud of you. That sounds like that's the best part. Yeah, that's my favorite. There's no words to explain how proud I am of my son. Probably what I'm most proud of is the consistency and ability to prove itself on and off the track to be hired by a professional team. That professional team is Clawson Marshall Racing. I had noticed Emerson at some of the local races, started paying attention to him. There's a huge race in Tulsa, Oklahoma kind of the Indy 500 of micro racing, and uh, he actually went down and won. Team owner Tim Clawson is also all about family. Tim's son Brian Clawson raced in the Indy 500 on three occasions before tragically dying in a crash six years ago at the age of 27. The love that Brian and I had in this sport wasn't just his successes behind the wheel. We always had this love for the development, the next generation of the sport. I mean, Emerson fits that to a T. This whole team really is about Brian. Whether he decides he wants to go NASCAR racing or he wants to run Indy cars or the Indy 500, I think whatever he wants to do is reachable. With our team specifically, you know, we, we kind of look at, you know, how they do in the race car um, is first and foremost, of course, you gotta be able to win races at this stuff. But then secondary, we also look at how they are out of the race car and how professional they are, how they interact with fans. Um, you know, we pay attention to their social media and make sure that they're, you know, doing the right things there that would represent our sponsors well. So, you know, the first thing that kind of caught our eye was, uh, you know, winning races at that level, um, but then paying attention to who he was as a person as well, uh, which he checked that box uh, probably as much as he did winning the races. Um, we had an opportunity with Class of Marshall that came up last August uh, where we needed a driver to fill in for just a few races, um, but we had to do it at a very high level. Some of our biggest races in the, of the season were coming up. And uh, we, had, we had ran a race against Emerson, well quite a few races against Emerson, but there was one in particular actually here in Indy during the USAC National Midget Race that our driver and him just I mean, they went at it for, you know, 20 of the 30 lap race for the win and, uh, you know, ran each other with such respect and, uh, you know, a lot of the young kids now, you, you, you need to find that, you know, it doesn't happen um, as naturally as we hoped it would and, uh, and Emerson and this other kid just put on a show and uh, so I kind of thought back to that moment was like, you know, if we we're going to give a kid a shot at this level. Um, Emerson just absolutely checked every box we had for that. Emerson has a list of accomplishments, but there's one thing this 17-year-old could not do this year, pro. I missed it for a race. I mean, I would rather be at the racetrack. Who doesn't want to go drive a race car, right? I mean, that's pretty fun. So do you ever get nervous when you're racing? I've been doing it for so long. It's like anything, right? When you first start, obviously you're nervous. It's just a part of life now, I guess. <laughs> to me, I'm still the same 17-year-old kid I've always been and the same race car driver I've always been. It doesn't happen overnight, so um, you don't really realize the change. It happens so slowly. Do you think about the dangers, though? We obviously buy the best safety equipment possible and stuff like that to, to protect ourselves and um, make sure nothing like that happens. Is being a teenage race car driver a 24-7 kind of commitment? Yeah, it's something I've always done, so um, I don't really know any different. I guess I'm a pretty competitive person in anything, so just as much as I like winning, I hate to lose, so I guess that's part of it. You went from being a student at Franklin High School to learning now online. Was that your choice? To me, I would rather go to Franklin Community, and you know, I'm a social person. I like seeing my friends, but if you want to be a race car driver, you have to make some sacrifices and stuff like that, but you know, luckily I'm close enough with all my friends that it didn't really affect anything, and a lot of my friends follow my racing, and it didn't make a huge deal, but um, obviously it's not something 
that a 17 year old kid wants to do, I guess. I miss a lot of things like birthday parties, uh, just hanging out with my friends, being a kid sometimes, but that's what I want to do, so. Do you feel cheated? I don't feel cheated or anything like that. I just feel like it's, I mean, it's a choice. I feel like uh, this is what I want to do, so I'm doing what I want to do, I guess. It's, it's just a little bit different. Um, I feel like if you talk to any race car driver, that's kind of how they feel too. When you're, when you're a parent, and you're the crew chief and you're the mechanic and all these things, at the end of the day, you're still racing with your 15-year-old child. When you leave that uh, facility or when you're at home or on Tuesday, you're still trying to raise a 14-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 16-year-old. So it's real, the difficult part is keeping the switch turned from a parent to a boss to your, you're the car owner, you're the crew chief, you're the financing behind it at times. So that, that's what people don't realize uh, as far as racing families. Um, to where I'm not saying it's the same in, uh, or it's different or the same in baseball or soccer or something, because I, I haven't went through that. But I can tell you the competitive and the intensity that's involved in the racing side. And then you got to flip around and be a parent all week and make sure their schoolwork's done and the different things like that. That's where it becomes difficult. How important is it that your dad was once a race car driver. Yeah, I think it helps a lot just because, you know, he's been able to get me to where I'm at now. And, and he's able to give you good advice. He tries to give me good advice. <laughs> Is it good advice? Sometimes I, I think so, sometimes not. Is it tough when he gives you advice that you don't want to take? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just sometimes we butt heads a little bit on that stuff, but he's just trying to help me and make me better. Um, it's just like anything else, like a, a dad trying to help his kid better is shot in basketball. What's your favorite racing movie? Probably Talladega Nights, I guess, there's not many. <laughs> hey man, if not first, you're last. Right. Could you imagine your life without racing in it? Think back to when I was five, I don't remember much before that. I don't know any different, really. I guess I've kind of just grew up around it. What's it like having your own clothing line? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I give my friends some shirts and stuff like that so they can wear them and support me that way. What's been the biggest difference about being a hired driver? Tim's my boss, but obviously we're, we're close and the whole team's close and we're all friends, but at the end of the day, we're, we're there to win races and get the job done. Your team owner lost his son. Has he talked to you about that a lot? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of what this 47 team's kind of all about, is Brian and spreading awareness about organ donation. Organ donations are very important to you, why? Well, we, had, uh, we lost our son, Brian, um, in a racing accident in August of 2016 um, at the Belleville Nationals. And, uh, you know, Brian grew up in the sport. I, I drove sprint cars. Um, when, when I got hurt, we got him racing quarter midgets at five years old. Um, so we kind of gone through the gamut of, of racing um, to the Indy 500. Um, when we lost Brian, um, we didn't know he was an organ donor. Um, we got, fortunately, uh, when he was hurt at the track, somebody thought to grab his um, his bag that had his wallet and stuff in it, and uh, we were able to find that um, the morning um, of uh, all this going on. Um, and, and I can honestly say in that moment, if we wouldn't have known that was his wish, I'm not sure if I could have said yes to that question. Um, I was in no way in the frame of mind to do that. Um, but fortunately, uh, you know, he had made that decision for us, and it started us on a journey of you know, while it you know, was and forever will be the worst moment in our life, um, a, a little bit of light um, to get to what tomorrow would bring and what the next week would bring and what the next month would bring. Um, and so it's just kind of something that we've, we've held on to as a family. Um, and, um, and, and through the motorsports world, it's, it's just taken on this life of, of, of its own to uh, to promote organ donation. Um, the Driven to Save Lives program now has signed up, you know, seven, 8,000 people to be organ donors. Um, and, uh, you know, as it, it, much success as Brian had on the track and the legacy that he, he left in that realm, it truly will be his legacy of what he left to, you know, to the world through his decision to be an organ donor. Your mom says that there are no words to describe how proud she is of you. Is she your biggest cheerleader? I mean, yeah. One time I signed an autograph. I remember she said that to remember that she was the first autograph, not the girl <laughs> I actually signed an autograph for. So why are you such a successful race car driver? You know, I'll do anything to win.